Today I want to talk about prolactin. You can buy my workout programs as well as other merchandise in my web shop, link in the description under this video. Hey y'all, this is Justin and today I want to talk about prolactin. Prolactin is a hormone that we hardly ever talk about. Testosterone, estradiol, GH, those guys are the big players that we like to talk about a lot. So today I thought I'd show some love to prolactin. Okay, so first and foremost, prolactin is a hormone that is secreted from the lactotroph cells that are located in the anterior pituitary gland. And now its release occurs in a pulsatile manner, meaning that it's not tonically released or consistently released, but instead it's released in small pulses with the vast majority of its release occurring during REM sleep. Now, in a person with a normal circadian rhythm, we would say its peak release is roughly between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. And its half-life circulating in serum is roughly about 20 minutes. Now that we got the background out of the way, let's talk about prolactin and its relationship with other hormones. So prolactin has an inhibitory effect, meaning it blocks on the endogenous production of testosterone. It does this by suppressing the release of FSH and LH. Now in patients with primary hypothyroidism, there's an increase in thyrotropin releasing hormone, that's TRH, which therefore stimulates TSH release, and it'll also increase the production of prolactin. Now, that elevated TSH and elevated prolactin level will return to normal once you address the elevation in TSH, which in this case would occur um, or be addressed with thyroid hormone replacement, at which that will correct the prolactin levels. Additionally, estrogen can also increase prolactin secretion as well as stress and sleep deprivation. Now, you may be wondering why we're talking about prolactin here. And this is a TRT group, so that's the principal hormone we like to talk about, is testosterone. Well, because in some patients who have sexual dysfunction, namely decreased sensitivity or delayed orgasm, aka inorgasmia, it may be worthwhile to evaluate someone's prolactin levels. Also, in patients who have low testosterone at baseline, in the presence, in the context of elevated prolactin, those patients may sometimes warrant further work, workup, which diagnostic imaging is sometimes part of that workup. If the prolactin is high, you need to know whether it's secondary to an other underlying etiology or if it's secondary to medications. The primary medication class that increases prolactin are the psych meds, namely the antipsychotics, and they do this principally because they are dopamine antagonists, primarily dopamine 2 receptor antagonists, meaning that they block dopamine, which prevents prolactin levels from getting high. Now, it's extremely rare that medications will get prolactin levels high, but the biggest culprit would be risperdone, which has been purported in some reports to get prolactin levels upwards of 300 to 400. Most medications will rarely ever get prolactin level up to 100 or more. Also, serotonin can also increase prolactin, how, hence why SSRIs may cause some sexual dysfunction in themselves. Now, SSRI, SSRIs, if they do cause any sexual dysfunction or increase prolactin, that increase in prolactin will be very nominal, very minimal at best. So addressing prolactin, hyperprolactinemia, can be done so first either by addressing the underlying etiology that causes it or treating it with medication intervention. Medications such as bromocryptine, P5P, cabergoline, and believe it or not, metformin can all help manage hyperprolactinemia. This video is sponsored by Mizumi, the number one pick for men on TRT. Shop now at Mizumi's using the link in the description of this video.